Good morning, YouTube or BookTube. This is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video this morning. My wife is off doing errands. It is a Wednesday morning here in Southwest Michigan. It is October the 17th, 2018. It's 11.29, late Wednesday morning. I thought I would just do a video spontaneously. I was going to talk about some other books, but I thought I'd just do a video showing the books around our main computer. Uh, all of you who have laptops or maybe tablets or just computers have books that you have around you. I'd be kind of curious for those who do have books around you just to you know list them for me in comments below. But I just thought I'd show you the books around where I may, I sit when I'm on the computer, writing in my online diaries, watching BookTube or YouTube or looking at email. First of all, I have this book. This is called Dictionary Fine. It is for when you know for you for when you know what you want to say but can't find can't think of the word like it uh, it has like father for example so you have father what the, what other words are for father uh, abbot adopt beget confessor create creator dad data daddy founder friar inventor minister old man Padre, Papa, Parent, Pastor, Patriarch, Pop, Priest, pro, Procreate, Reverend, things like that. So I have this book. I bought this years ago in East Lansing when our oldest son was going to Michigan State. And we went to this bookstore that he had a friend who worked there and I saw this book. And I didn't buy it that day. I had looked at it and then when we got home from East Lansing, I called up the store and said, uh, and I talked to the guy who was a friend of my, our son, about this book and could they have it sent to me because it was just, I just like looking at this book. Also I have a Psalter Hymnal uh, by, this is the Psalter Hymnal Doctrinal Standards and Liturgy of the Christian Reformed Church. It was published in 1959. I don't like the modern Psalters. I like the 1959 edition. Uh, it has in the back like the creeds, like the NF, the Nicaean, the Nicaean Creed, the Athanasian Creed, the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. And Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge of the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. That's the oldest creed of the church, the Apostles' Creed. It wasn't written by the Apostles, but it's a summary of the confession of the early Christian church. In the churches that we attend, they recite the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed, and uh, it has in, in liturgical forms, form for the inf baptism of infants. So I have that book, and then I have a Cruden's Complete Concordance, which if you're looking up for a verse in the Bible, and all you know is the first word, like uh, circumspect or circumcision, it just lists all the verses where that word is found. So it's a good thing. It, it, like sometimes you just can't find a verse, but this is a Cruden's Concordance. 
You've seen my Bibles. I have tons of Bibles around our main computer. This one is the New King James Version of the Holy Bible. And then I have an Oxford Pocket American Dictionary of Current English. I use this a lot. <laughs> and then I have uh, the Reformed Confessions harmonized with annotated bibliography of Reformed doctrinal works edited by Jar, Joe R. Beakey and St. Clair B. Ferguson. Uh, I just showed you the Westminster Confession of Faith, and that's in here. It has the, the Belgian Confession of 1561, the Heidelberg Catechism of 1563, the Second Helvetic Confession of 1566, the Canons of Dort, 1618, 1619, the Westminster Confession of Faith, 1647, the Westminster Shorter Catechism, 1647, the Westminster Larger Catechism of 1648. So this is a good reference. And I just showed you this book I got a couple of weeks ago, the New York Public Library American History Desk, Desk Reference. One volume source for the most frequent sought information about American history. And then I have the complete works of the great 19th century English Baptist writer, preacher, C.H. Spurgeon, all his works. Random House Thoracerus, synonyms and antonyms, more than 80,000 words. A Guide to Pronouncing Biblical Names. <laughs> that was in there. It has a little... This photograph was given to me many years ago by a close friend who, who's now in heaven. That is a statue of Richard Baxter at Kitty Mister in England. He gave that to me. He was stationed. My friend and his wife, they were in the military and they were stationed in England in their military career and he gave me this photo of Richard Baxter <laughs> forgot that was in here <laughs> then I have I used this when I was in seminary I used to carry it around me all the time because no was it this one maybe it was another one uh, let me see maybe this is another one anyway I had a book like this when I was in seminary in Bible, in Bible college, I can't, I cannot spell. <laughs> I can't speak English, I can't pronunciate, and I can't spell. So I always had this little book, the Word Book 3, a spelling guide, over 40,000 words, and, and I would use this all the time. Because you have to write term papers, you have to do, write essays on exams, and I would always have this with me. Then I have slang and euphorisms, a dictionary of oath, curses, insults, ethics, slurs, sexual slang and metaphor, drug talk, college lingo and related matters. I think I got two of these. I got this one too, American slang. I like, I like uh, slang. I don't use slang. Well, probably maybe once in a while I might use a slang word. But I have these in my, my main computer, American slang. <laughs> and then I have liturgies of the Western Church, like uh, John Calvin uh, uh, in Geneva there in Switzerland during the time of the Protestant Reformation. The four, and this is by John Calvin. Uh, the form of church prayers and hymns with manner of administrating the sacraments and consecrating the marriage according to the custom of the ancient church. And then it has, that's on, uh, then it has Martin Busser, who was one of the, I think he was a German reformer. The Strasbourg Liturgy, Zingli, the, the Zurich liturgy. This is all uh, liturgies or forms of worship. They even, they even have, I didn't know this, but they have uh, Richard Baxter, the Savoy liturgy from 1661. 
And then I have Slots, Schlotz original miscellany, which is just miscellaneous things like, you know, different information like, um, oh, let me see here. Just different odd things. Like American dinner slang, eat Adam's Eve, two poached eggs, a Murphy, what's a Murphy? Potatoes, uh, moo juice, which is milk, uh, bucket of hail, which is a glass of ice, uh, hounds on an island, which is sausages on beans, uh, put out the lights and cry, which is liver and onions, you know, it's like dinner, American dinner slang. Uh, Burn the British, which is toasted muffin. Uh, crowd, two of anything. Eve with a lid on, which is apple pie. <laughs> Things like that. Here's another Cruden's Complete Concordance. This is the Doctrinal Standards and Liturgy and Church Order of the Nothings Reformed Church. That was the church that Dr. Joel Arbiki was a minister in before he left and started the Heritage Reformed Church. And this is Aphorisms, a personal selection by W.H. Auden and Louis Kronberger. Like, you know, aphorisms like, uh, let me see, find it. They're just little sayings. Like, uh, here's a section on education. Uh, let me quote here Nietzsche. What does not destroy me makes me stronger. Uh, Hazel it. When a thing ceases to be a subject of controversy, it ceases to be a subject of interest. Here's Dr. Johnson. When I take up the end of the web and find it pack thread, I do not expect by looking further to find embroidery. <laughs> George Eliot. Ignorance is not a damnable as humbug, but when a prescribes pills, it may happen to do more harm. <laughs> uh, let me see here, what else? Burton. I don't know, I don't like that one. Let me see. Don. This is from Nature, Next, this chapter on Nature. Nature has no goal, though she has law. Things like that, little amperisms. So these are the kind of books I have by our main computer. I have all kinds of Bibles study Bibles, different translations of the Bible. But I'm always using a dictionary because I can't spell. I cannot spell. To me, I, I, if I knew English grammar and I could spell, now you know, a lot of things come to my mind, you know, words, because I read so much. But the problem is when I sit down to write, if I was to write seriously, I I can't spell the majority of the words that are in my head. Like this morning, my wife was going to go to the store. And I put down on the grocery list, deli ham. I don't know how to spell deli. <laughs> my wife looked at my spelling and kind of chuckled. Uh, I can't spell. And uh, I can't memorize. When I was in Bible college and seminary, you had to do a lot of uh, Bible memorization. And I couldn't, I can't. Now, I know the Bible. I can find things generally. Now, I, I don't read the Bible, uh, you know, from Genesis to Revelations. Uh, as I mentioned, that when I study the Bible, I study different uh, portions of the Bible. Like I might look at the Gospel of John for a while, or I might look at a certain theological subject uh, like I was reading this morning. I was reading uh, for devotions grounded in heaven, recentering Christian hope and life on God. So I'm looking at what the Bible teaches about heaven, about eschatology, about seeing God in heaven, uh, the work of Christ, uh, bringing the elect to heaven, things like that. And um, I was also reading this morning, I got out uh, these old volumes of the works of Ezekiel Hopkins. These were printed in 1809. Uh, 
Ezekiel Hopkins was an English Puritan from the 17th century. I bought those old volumes, as, as I mentioned many years ago. There's a seminary here in Holland, Michigan, and they were getting rid of their old books. When I was first, uh, Carol, Carol and I were first married, her parents lived near the seminary, and I would go over there, and I would, I, as I mentioned, I would check out books. But they, they would also get rid of the old books and sell them for a dime a piece. And so I bought a lot of old books for a dime a piece. And I bought these Ezekiel works of Ezekiel Hopkins for 40 cents. <laughs> and I was looking online this morning if they were still available. Well, they were published by the Banner Truth Trust, but they're out of print. And each volume goes for 50 bucks if you were to buy them brand new. Now, you could buy them like on ebook or you know, things like that. But if you wanted to buy the complete works, it probably cost you at least over $100. And I got these. Now, it's very readable. I mean, they're old and they're all beat up. But I was reading this morning. There's a there's a, a treatise in here I was reading this morning for devotions called The Excellency of the Heavenly Treasures. It's on Matthew 6. The text for the treatise is on Matthew 6, verses 20, 21, 22. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust is corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And you can read it. It's very readable. It's all beat up and it's all it's all musty. You might sneeze sometimes reading this stuff. But it's very readable. It's like I was reading here. Um, he says here, for example, and it's very, uh, Ezekiel Hopkins, he was a 17th century English Puritan. He didn't leave the Church of England. He was a bishop in the Church of England. He was an Anglican. Some of the Puritans, as I've mentioned, they, they left and became nonconformists. Some fled, fled to the Netherlands, like William Ames, and some were in prison, like John Bunyan was in prison for a, a while, who was a very famous English Puritan who wrote Pilgrim's Progress. He says here, this is Ezekiel Hopkins, uh, in his quoting from his treatise, The Excellency of Heavenly Treasures. He says, and that uh, it also appears two things, in that he sets a higher price upon opportunities for the increasing of his heavenly treasure than upon any other seasons or opportunities whatsoever. Oh, what gain and enriching does, does he make on a market day for his soul? Sabbaths to him are precious. Ordinances to him are precious. Why? Because in them he sees the glory of Christ displayed and the fullness of the promise is unfolded. Because of them his faith is strengthened, his love is inflamed, his hope confirmed. He goes far more wealthy than from them than he came to them. Therefore, it is an argument that he labors to increase his heavenly treasure because he sets a higher price and value upon opportunities to increase that treasure than he does in any other, than upon any other whatsoever. Two, it appears in that he is willing to stand at a stint in outward enjoyments, but he cannot bear a stint in grace. He cannot live upon a self-allowance there. Let God deal as he, how he pleases with him in outward things. Let him reduce him to a morsel of bread and a cup of water. It is enough, so he gives him but a Benjamin's portion in himself. Let him seize upon all his temporals and take them away. If so be he does but instate him in a great possession of spirituals, he is content. My body, he says, he can subsist with little, but my soul cannot. My spiritual charges and expenses are great and multiply upon me daily. I have many strong temptations to be resisted and many prevailing corruptions to be mortified and many holy and spiritual duties to be performed. And how shall I be able to defray all this was, so, was no better to supply? My present stock is not able to maintain it. 
Still he is complaining that he has too little to maintain him in his work, that he may be such a Christian as he, he aims at and would be. Therefore he cries out, Lord, though I thank thee for what I do possess, yet he still craves more of himself. Thou art infinite, and what is it, what is it to enjoy a little of an infinite God? And more of thy Son, is he all sufficient? Why, what is it to have an insufficient portion in an all sufficient Savior? More of thy grace, that is free. What is it to enjoy a limited portion of unlimited and boundless grace? This is the property of, a he of heavenly riches, that they make them that have them still to be covetous after more. The worldling adds heap to heap, and the Christian adds grace to grace, one degree of grace to another and thinks he has obtained to nothing, till he has obtained so far as that there is nothing further to be obtained. And therefore he goes on laboring after more, till he does insensibly ripen into glory, and has nothing more than for him to desire. If you value heavenly things now as your treasure, you will still be adding to this treasure, growing every day richer than, toward, than others toward, towards God. And that's how he writes. Ezekiel Hopkins. So I got these works out because I was down the lower level uh, looking at this treasure. I can't at this. I remember reading this this treatise, the excellency of the heavenly treasures, and I, I've been thinking about heaven and seeing God the last couple of months, and that came to my mind. But I wanted to show you the books around my our main computer, like I've I've been. As far as my diary this morning, I'm on page 854. My wife goes back to work tonight. I might do what I've been reading as far as secular literature. I d yesterday, my wife and I, we went out to the lake, went out for lunch, and on the way home, she wanted to stop at some thrift store and look at look at something, and I bought some used books. So I'll show those maybe tonight. Just a couple odd things. I did get. I did volunteer at the Book Nook Monday, and I got some books, and I'll show those. So yeah, this morning I'm reading uh, "Grounded in Heaven: Recentering Christian Hope and the Life on God," reading Ezekiel Hopkins, and I also was reading once again "Puritan Piety." Writings in honor of Joel Arbiki. I was reading the one on, uh, what was it called? The Kingdom of God and the Theology of Jonathan Edwards by Paul M. Smalley. So, yeah, today is a Wednesday. I don't know what I'm going to do today. I'm kind of a little out of it, but I just want to show you these books make a video, say hello, hope you're doing well, thank you for the comments, thank you for the subscribers, and, yeah, and tell me what books you have around your, where you sit when you write, or when you are on the computer, or when you're making, writing your diary, or when you're on your laptop, or your tablet, be kind of curious to know. So I'll sign off, until next time, bye.